What up, YouTube fam? We in here. I'm looking crazy. I need to do something about this beard. I get that, but I'm so excited that Lightroom, in their update today, has finally added camera color profiles for the Canon R5. I'm assuming for the R6 as well. I don't know that because I don't have that camera and I haven't even done any research to see what profiles they put in. I just know that there are camera profiles for the R5 and I wanted to jump in and compare the camera profiles versus the Adobe profiles versus the DPP, which is the Canon software, their color profiles, just to see how they all stack up together. Now, let me just say real quick, I do not use Canon software. It is clunky. I have no idea how to use it. So I don't know if there's anything that it auto applies, what it does. I have no clue. So what I'm doing is I'm bringing them into Lightroom, bringing them into DPP, and I'm not touching anything but the profile. So whatever the software does to the images is what the software does to the images. So I don't want to keep you waiting any longer because you're here to see some sample images. I want to see this stuff. So let's jump right in. Okay, so up first we have the standard profiles. Now, let me first say, look at the difference between, even before you compare the DPP to the camera standard, look how terrible the Adobe colors were. For people who bought the R5 and brought these things into Lightroom, this is why the colors got such a bad rap because the Adobe color space for the R5 files was absolutely terrible. It was so bad. Just look at that difference between the Adobe standard and the DPP standard or the camera standard. It's just night and day difference. Let me also say in this particular image, the white balance was at 6,400. It was too warm, okay? So you're gonna see that uh, on the DPP and the camera standard, it seems to be uh, orange and it was. The white balance was way too warm, but this image was a close-up image that I had that really showed the skin color, so I wanted to use this image. So try to look past that. If you can't, that's fine, but I'm just letting you know these the white balance was really warm on this particular image okay so let's start with this one if we look at the dpp standard which is in the middle this is the typical uh, color that you're going to get from the camera itself and it looks good if you compare that to the adobe standard you can see that number one saturation is very low number two there's kind of a greenish tint into the skin and that was something that a lot of people complained about with the r5 files in lightroom is that skin tones looked very sickly and they do and you can really see that when you compare it to the dpp so obviously there is a huge um a huge jump up in terms of just color and everything and using the camera uh, standard profile, which is on the right. Now, I will say for the standard profile, I do think the camera profile in Lightroom is a little bit more on the orange side where I think on the DPP standard, there's some red tones in there that I think is more pleasing. And look, the reality is I don't think that the camera matching profiles in Lightroom have ever been perfect when you compare them to the Canon DPP software. The colors always look the best in the native software. That, that's just the reality of it because the software makers usually are reverse engineering this stuff. So I don't think the profiles have ever been spot on, but they are pretty good. And in this case, when you look at the camera standard versus the Adobe standard, there's a huge jump there. Now, is the skin tone a little bit more orange in comparison to the DPP standard? Yes, but it's also gonna be preference on what you prefer. Do you prefer kind of more of the red tones or the orange tones? But here's the biggest takeaway from that. You can adjust this orange really easy, but if you look at those Adobe standard colors, if you're using that profile, there simply was a lot of work to get the color, the skin tone to be where you wanted it to be. It was a huge chore to the point where I was sometimes reluctant to even use my R5 because I didn't feel like putting in the effort to get those skin tones back to where they need to be. And as I said in the intro, I don't use the DPP software and even exporting these files for this thing, the DPP software was like unbelievably slow. I don't even know why it was so slow. And the file sizes are double the file size of what they are coming out of Lightroom. So I'm not sure what the DPP software does, but the colors, the camera standard colors, uh, to me, they are not 
terrible. They're not great, but my goodness, are they a huge, huge, huge um, improvement over the Adobe standard. So let's move on to uh, Adobe or to neutral. Okay. Now this is where I think the camera profile is a little bit more closer to the DPP profile. Now I do still think that the, the Lightroom profiles kind of err more on the side of orange where the DPP software is a little bit more red. But again, that is easily fixable. You can adjust that to taste very easily. Um, however you want that to be, whether it's using the white balance or using the color tools in whatever software you use, that's easy to adjust. That's not a problem at all. But again, if you look at that Adobe profile and you look at that neutral, it just has a gray tone to the skin, completely unpleasing. The skin tones do not look that look like that in real life. I mean, when you start with the Adobe profile, trying to get the colors right, I'm telling you, if you haven't done it, consider yourself lucky. And if you have had to do it, you understand how much of a chore it is. And, you know, of course, there are people out there that created their profiles um, for this. And it actually would be interesting to see how those profiles compare to the camera profiles. I don't have any of them. And I don't think I'm going to buy them just for this comparison because I'm sure someone else will get to that who have bought that. So you'll have to check that video whenever someone puts it out. But again, what an unbelievable difference between the Adobe profile and the camera profile. It's just almost night and day. And at least even though I don't think the camera profiles are spot on to DPP, and you may or may not like that. You may prefer the camera profiles over the DPP. It's all obviously personal preference, but at least these camera profiles start you out in a much better position than the Adobe profiles ever did. It's just unreal how terrible the Adobe profiles are. It just, it's crazy. So now let's look at the portrait uh, profile. And again, it's the same thing here. I do think the camera matching profiles are a little bit more on the orange side. This one is really bringing out the fact that that white balance was really, really warm. So again, look past that. Don't be down in the comments talking about, oh, it looks so orange. Canon colors, they're too warm. This image was warm. The white balance was at 6,400. I'm saying it again. This, this, it, was that, it was way too warm for this. I was using flash. The white balance was too warm. Okay. So yes, of course it's looking really warm because the white balance was warm next. Um, so again, look at those Adobe colors, terrible. So if you were using that R5 and you're using that Adobe profile, you're, you're doomed. It's so much work to try to get those colors good. And at least now when you look at the camera profile versus the DPP, comparing that to the Adobe, again, you have a good starting point. And that's really what camera profiles are. For the most part, you're not just setting your profile and then that's it. You're not doing anything. It really is a starting point. And then you adjust it to taste based on how you like to color grade your images or the mood and the vibe that you're going for. So it really is a starting point. So at least with these camera profiles now, we have a good starting point and they are relatively close to the DPP software, which is great. Yes, is the camera profile a little bit more orange? Absolutely, but again, that's easy to adjust. So at least we have a great starting point now and you can adjust it however you need it to be adjusted. Now last, I'm comparing the faithful and I only have the DPP versus the camera because uh, Adobe doesn't have a faithful setting. So I wanted to compare these two and also adjusted the white balance in this one. So I took it down from 6,400 to I think 5,700 or something like that. Uh, it, it was a little bit challenging trying to figure out how to, uh, how to do that in the DPP software because I'm telling you, if you haven't used it, go in there and check out that software. It's, it's crazy. Uh, so I did flip these. Sorry about that. So the camera profile is on the left. The DPP is on the right. And Faithful is typically the color profile that I use a lot. I just I like the tones that Faithful produces. Uh, it doesn't oversaturate things. It's just very pleasing. I often use Faithful profiles for portraits. Um, and so if we look at these, 
the same thing that I've been saying throughout this whole video, yes, the camera matching profiles are a little bit more on the orange side versus the more red tones in the DPP. But if you look at these, not that objectionably, you will see that the profiles that Adobe is doing with their camera matching profiles are damn good. They are good. Um, no, they're not perfect, but if they had to reverse engineer this stuff to get these out there, I think they did a great job. The starting point that you would have with the camera matching profiles is great in my opinion. And when I compare this to the DPP, to me, the colors are still there. I tend to prefer more of the oranger tones because typically when I edit portraits, I reduce the reds anyway because nobody likes to look really red. And a lot of uh, white folks, uh, they, they look really red. Uh, and even even blacks, you know, black folks, darker skin, um, the, the red tones, I'll typically bring those down a little bit as well, just because, uh, you know, just depending on what's going on, people just can look red in photos. So I prefer myself the camera uh, matching profile colors over the DPP. But regardless of what you choose, again, the starting point that we have now with these color profiles is is a godsend. And. If you haven't already bought the color profiles from Color Fidelity or the other guy that does the profiles and you've just been working with the Adobe Color, this is going to be a great upgrade for you. And um, yeah, I am super excited that they finally, finally put these in. And I don't even think that it was in the uh, release notes for the, the upgrade. It might have been. I'm not sure. I honestly just stumbled across it. Um, I pulled in an R5 file and it, it defaulted to the camera profile cause that's how I have my settings in Lightroom set up. So I was, I was thrilled. So that's why I did this video crazy beard and all cause I just wanted to drop it and let people know if you're a Canon R5 user, do that upgrade for Lightroom, get these colors, camera matching profiles, man, I don't have anything else to say. Appreciate you rocking with me. More videos to come. Take it easy. Have a good one.